So hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I have invited Nikhil. So Nikhil currently working at ByteDance Singapore. So today I will discuss everything about how you can get interview opportunity from Singapore, like how you can get interview opportunity from ByteDance Singapore. So I just want to ask Nikhil, could you please give us your quick introduction so that our viewer will get to know about you? Yes, sir. thanks Amit Anjali for giving me this opportunity. So hello everyone, I'm Nikhil. Uh, I work at TikTok, also known as ByteDance Singapore as machine learning engineer. So I've been working here for about uh, eight months now. And before that I was working in Finland, uh, same field. And yeah, I graduated from Bits Pilani in 2020. And yeah, I think that's about me. And I do, uh, yeah, so I work on this. Uh, so I, I think you are working in machine learning domain, right? Yes. Yeah, so getting job in machine learning domain is really difficult. Like I, what I see lots of time, they have only opening for software engineering role, but very rarely they used to have opening for machine learning role. So that's great. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I want to ask one question that how you got interview opportunity from ByteDance and how if any person want to work at Singapore, there are lots of box of working at Singapore, especially, especially the tech system, like I really like the tech mm -hmm. system of Singapore. So I just want to ask how you got interview opportunity from ByteDance and if someone want to uh, ship in, uh, to Singapore from India, then how they can apply for any company uh, which is located in Singapore? Uh, so there are like two types of people here. First, who are grad still in university and want to work in Singapore as intern or something. And then there are people who are already working in India and then they want to go to Singapore. So there is slightly different methodology I think people should follow. Uh, so if someone is in the university, they should focus more on research collaboration with some research institutes in Singapore, like NUS, NTU, SUTD, and there are many other corporate research institutes also like ASTAR and other. So they should mail the props there uh, or send a mail to the HR or recruiter there to get an internship. And that would be best way to approach. And I'm saying this in the perspective of machine learning, like Software engineering would be slightly different because this is more research oriented part. And uh, someone who is already working, I would suggest them to apply directly for the company because there are a lot of available jobs and they will probably get interviewed. Interview, just prepare, need to prepare for the interviews uh, like lead code, obviously, competitive coding and system design and other things. Uh, personally, for me, I applied after having like two years of experience in Finland. So inter getting interview was straightforward for me. And then uh, the next part was to prepare for the interview and everything. So that is like just generic interview, uh, competitive and other things. So one part I want to say that Nikhil is also running a YouTube channel and he's also putting a very good content at his YouTube channel. So I will put a channel uh, link in the description. So you can uh, check that description and you can definitely at least uh, visit uh, his channel because he is creating really great content. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I have seen, I personally seen his content and I am totally satisfied with that. Okay, so uh, my next question is, uh, like, uh, what is the work-life difference between working at India and working at Singapore? Uh, so this question, I, I will be a little bit biased because I have not worked in India. Uh, like, I have just interned one time in my university, uh, but I have not worked in India. So what I heard from my friends is that Working in India is slightly more stressful. Like they have to work a lot of hours and working in Singapore or any developed country, uh, there is some rules 
that are there like you only work eight hours and stuff so life is more you know work-life balance is much more here and i think working in singapore has a more like singapore as a country has more more fun things to do all around and it's a small country so you can do many things apart from work like hiking or some technological things like web uh like artificial web surfing or many other things these things are available uh yeah so uh, the second like uh, uh, i am totally satisfied with your uh, this answer because i really i used to see your lots of status whatsapp status and i get <laughs> i like wow he is working at a very good city and something like that so i <laughs> i get a very uh, like a wow kind of vibes yeah nice. so, uh, like um, uh, like my mo- most of the viewer and uh, you can say lots of my viewer are fresher or student who is uh, currently studying at this uh, college so mm-hmm. what happens lots of people want to do machine learning kind of thing i am also uh, i am very much i have very very in- much interest in machine learning domain but mm-hmm. what uh, i used to see that there are very less opening in machine learning domain mm-hmm. but still some student uh, uh, wants to go in that domain and they work really hard like uh, doing some research work kind of thing so what mm-hmm. are Uh, things that you want to what are some tips you want to give them uh, i just want to ask uh, please give some tips to our viewers yeah. sure so uh, like it's uh, so you have to decide early in your career if you want to go to machine learning field because then switching field field would be difficult if you like because software engineering you have to fully focus on those things and in machine learning will take a lot of time so if someone has already decided that they want to go in this field then i would suggest start with reading a lot of like doing some basic machine learning 101 course like from youtube some people have playlist about basics of machine learning i started from udacity and then there is some good course with andrew ang on that, that is very famous machine learning course fundamental course that everyone starts with and after doing this course what anyone should do is start coding or contributing in some open source library the most famous library i like uh, tensorflow sklearn or something like that you don't have to start contributing a new algorithm completely just maybe start with some normal thing like fixing a type typo or something like that or you can go to their github repository and see the issues that are already open or can help someone fix the issue or that is very important point in building a point in your resume and then apply for some research jobs so pro- start with uh, like applying for some research institutes because they have lot more openings or even if you don't get outside india then start with indian one first because it's like one month two months of indian internship but that will give a lot of point to your resume and that you can take to apply to the next because i also started my first internships in india internship in india and then i start going to a foreign country to for this internship yeah i think that's about it but you have to always do uh, algorithm data section and algorithm because every interview will ask these things so always be ready for such test um, so like what happens when we used to give our interview like in the software engineering domain hd domain mm-hmm. then we generally uh, then interview generally ask question related to dsa data structure and algorithm system mm-hmm. planning kind of question so how the machine learning interview uh, different from this software engineering interview like we generally got question related to dsa system designing something like how we can mm-hmm. scale the system so how a machine learning interview different from the software in- engineering interview sorry uh yeah so uh before coming to byte dance i had interview with three company in the same domain uh tiktok amazon and apple and uh so all of them ask similar pattern so the pattern for machine learning interview is same like one data structure algorithm question that won't be any different from any software engineer so like there is a, this misconception like machine learning will get asked slightly less difficult question in dhsa but that's not true so it will be at the same level 
but in dsa usually people ask something they either ask more dsa second question or second question is more focused on your resume but in machine learning they will ask some machine learning general concepts like one sample question would be uh, how do you think a uh, neural network work uh, describe me abstract view of neural network or tell me difference between loss functions and something like that so these are some basic questions and if someone already have some experience in their resume so they can grill on that resume experience also like why you did that why you didn't choose other thing so that's the sample i would say like three question pattern for every interview one dsa one general machine learning and one resume experience based right so now you can see here that no matter at what domain you are applying you will never skip from a dsa data structure and algorithm part so i am also i have also created a playlist for that and i i am also creating a lots of video related to lead code questions so you can watch that videos also so you can you will never skip from this part dsa part is really important yeah. either for software <laughs> engineering domain or machine learning domain or anything so this is really important now you can see here and one thing i just want to say that i had also given a byte dance test and uh, during the test they only asked data structure question from me and the test was for machine learning uh, machine learning domain only and mm -hmm. there i got a really difficult question like competitive like whatever what type of question i used to got in competitive programming site like course of course course i got this kind of question during the test so yeah dsa is really important so what i have told yeah mm -hmm. yeah so so can you share some fun thing about singapore with our viewers like i like lots of people really fascinated about working at singapore kind of see <laughs> yeah country so so uh like uh, i can say there are a lot of tall buildings so <laughs> that's what you will enjoy the skyline is quite nice so you will enjoy a lot of offices are in top floors like 30 floors so whenever you sit and work you will see all singapore and that's quite nice to see and yeah so singapore being a developed country it has lot of other facilities that like normal day to day facilities like public transport is quite great you never need your own vehicle to go anywhere and these are like uh, some things and if i compare with where i was working earlier in finland so in finland the life was more chill i would say because in europe the culture is more toward work life balance but singapore is slightly more aggressive and more fulfilling i would say like you work something and contribute to the direct to the production or something like that so and uh yeah i think a lot of fun things to do here like out water sports and other things so that is everything and the most important thing like there is not much difference here uh like main thing is there is not big difference in the term of salary like in india we see a lot of people getting like 3 lakhs salary per year and lot of people getting 40 lakhs uh, same experience but in uh, these developed country there is not such big difference so people are like quite uh, at the same level almost at the same level so the situation is not that competitive that you have to go from this company to that company switch and so life is more exciting It's really, really very nice because uh, what I'm seeing at India, there's a huge difference between salary of different <laughs> here. So even in the company yeah. also there is a huge difference. Like uh, sometimes yeah. someone is switching from a service based company to product based company, they used to get less as compared to uh, someone <laughs> is going from uh, shifting from product to product. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think I have asked all those question that I have decided to ask from you. Yeah. So that's all about this video. Thank you so much. And please, please check out uh Nikhil channel link in the description. So that's all. Thank you so much. Thanks, Amrita.